Hey everybody, Matthew Moore's MM Wood Studio. It's been a couple weeks since the last update, but I've really been working hard. I want to bring you guys up to date. It's time for another shop update. All right, well, as you can see, I've made a lot of progress on the cabinet. I've got oh, one of them glued up. Um, I've got both bases uh, dry assembled in the rough shapes. So let me walk you back through everything that's happened so far. So one of the first things I needed to do was to create panels for the cabinet. So to do that, I took a whole bunch of walnut and I cut it into rough lengths. And over at the pan saw, I resawed everything in half. And then I milled up all of my materials. Now with everything milled up, then I was able to take a look at everything and figure out where I wanted to cut all these for the same width, jointed my pieces, made the cuts of the table saw, and got everything to a uniform width. Now, once that was done, I wanted to glue these panels up. Now, for this project, I am uh, using a Domino DF500 for the majority of all of this joinery. So, you know, why not use a Domino to help keep all the panels aligned? And that's what I did. I cut Dominoes in the length of all the boards, depending on the length of the board, the amount of dominoes I put in, to help keep everything aligned during glue up. And that worked out perfectly. And then they're all just a little bit too wide, so I took those over to the jointer, jointed one edge, and cut everything to width. And then I cut everything to length. So with all that done, I was able to come back in and then do all the joinery I wanted to do with the dominoes to connect the vertical panels here to the horizontal panels. Now, at the next step was to mark out where I wanted to create the rabbit on the back of my cabinet. So I marked that out, and then I went over to the router and I slowly removed all of my waste. Now, once I had done that, then I was able to go to the table saw and make a rip cut, so removing the same amount of material that I had cut the depth of the rabbit. And then, well, it was just time to do a whole bunch of sanding and then glue this bad boy up. And I needed every single parallel clamp I had. Plus, um, that was the length of this width that I could span this. I have some clamps, parallel clamps are 24 inches. This is longer than 24. So I also uh, created some boat clamps from pieces of pine. Then I used my steel beam clamps to pull in the center of the cabinet where the shelf is to get everything nice and flush. And so that was the cabinet glued up. Now, three days before, I had done the rough dimensioning on all of this hickory for the base. Let it sit for a few days, came back, and then redimensioned all of it to what I wanted, the legs, the rails or aprons, and then what I'm calling the risers or the stretchers. Um, milled all of that up to its final dimensions, and I actually did all the milling at the jointer to four square all of this. Um, I was able to do all that at the jointer and get beautiful results where every face was nice and square to each other. So once that was done, I was able to start cutting all of my joints. And with the domino, um, I turned away from the number six that I used here in the cabinet to do all these pieces to a number 10 for the legs to the rails or the aprons. Um, and once that was done, then the next step was to do the double tendons I wanted to create, which are using number six uh, dominoes, but I'm gonna create my own stock when I glue all this up. Well, the full length of those are 40 meters, or 40 millimeters, that is, and six by 40s, and I wanted more than that. Give me just a little bit extra reach, because all the way to this cabinet is coming right through these, is pushing into these rails, and I wanna make sure to keep um, as much strength as I can, or build in as much strength as I can. So double tenons, so double loose tenons, and that was a lot of fun. So the first thing I did was I cut the double tenons on the Center. risers themselves, referencing the bottom face of the risers, because these are gonna be above, so I want those mortises on the bottom. Then I was able to do a little bit of math and figure out a secondary fence that I could create once I plunged in and made my first mortise cuts here on the aprons or the rails, and then I put that secondary fence in, plunged in, 
and I had the exact spacing I wanted to be able to do the double tenons and everything worked out really perfect. I'm really happy about that, it was awesome. So um, here you can see one of the bases, uh, rough put together and I still have some work to do shaping it. We're gonna do a little uh, taper that tapers on the legs and then we gotta shape the curves for the risers up here um, to give it that, that curved look on the bottom so you get, it looks as if it's rising up kind of, right? And um, yeah, and then I gotta glue up the other one of these guys, this cabinet, I need to do all the sanding for that and glue that up. But um, this is really good, I'm really digging this. Now again, there's gonna be a basket right here. And uh, right now we're in process of trying to find a wider basket. Now the drawers, they're gonna be made to hang along runners that are gonna get screwed in to the sides of the cabinet. That's why you don't see any joinery or any work up here. Um, we're just going to hang the drawers on some runners. Um, I'm thinking about teak because teak is oily and it's really raw, it's really strong and it'll self lubricate um, the runners themselves. So that's going to be cool. And this will give this kind of two tone look with the um, hickory down here, the drawers, everything here will be walnut. And then you'll, of course, have a basket that's light colored that'll help tie everything together. I have a question for you. And um, this came out of uh, something I went to today. I was at, a, at an event at Facebook um, out here in Atlanta. And here's my question to you guys that came out of this. And they, their big thing is pull, get data, research, etc. So to you guys, what do you think is a fair price for this project when it's done? That's question number one. And then question number two is what do you think a fair price is to have access to every single project in the school. That's gonna be 14 once this is done, 13 in total right now. What do you think a fair price for that is, for all those plans, all those videos, hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos? What, are, what is that? I wanna know, leave that in the comments below. Um, I really, really appreciate if you guys would take a couple of minutes to uh, answer those two questions for me. Now, I really appreciate it more or in addition to if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it again please it helps grow this channel and uh, helps keep me going making these videos so as always please subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video now if you're watching this on facebook head over well first share it in your timeline and then head over to the mm woodsdale page and like us there as well and if you're on instagram head over and do a search for mm Wood studio and follow me on instagram and get updates here in the shop as they happen. All right, that's it. You guys have a great week in your shop.